Hello, welcome to Fly Time, the angler's art. I'm Carolyn Sells. Uh, this is Leroy Hyatt. Today we're going to tie three very good flies. Um, so. One of them's my very favorite. Uh, we're going to tie a parachute Adams, mm -hmm. a caddis fly, a little different pattern. We're going to use deer hair. Which I've never seen. Yeah, it's one of my favorite flies. And we're also going to tie a Mother's Day caddis. Mm -hmm. um, Leroy's going to go through the um, materials for his parachute. All right, for the parachute, we use an 8 aught dry fly black thread. You could use gray, but I use black. I have a size 14 dry fly hook in the vise. You can use either poly yarn or antron for the post. Uh, you could also use white calf tail or calf body hair if you wanted, but this seems to work better for me. I will use a synthetic uh, gray dubbing. The tail will be tied with moose, and then of course the standard brown and grizzly uh, hackle. Now I have a size 14 uh, hook in the vise. I have pinched the barb. I will dress the thread like we always do. Or now, dress the this hooks pattern up. we're going to tie a little bit different. Well, it's um, a different way to finish it. Uh, I've had a lot of trouble with parachute atoms. I fought parachute atoms. I just could not make it come out. Everyone fights parachute well, atoms. I so this is, a, this is yeah. a good pattern. I was fishing it. in British Columbia. Uh, I wasn't catching a whole lot of fish that day, and a guy told me I should be using a size uh, 18 parachute atoms. Well, I chuckled a lot to myself because I don't think I'd ever tied one that small. Uh, anyway, there's the post, tied out of Antron. I'll come back to my story. I'm going to build a little bit of a base around that Antron. I will do more when I tie the hackle in. But this is a different pattern in the fact of the way you finish it. I always had trouble finishing the fly because it always bent the hackle out of shape or right. the post out of shape it's or something. It's never smooth at the hackle. That's correct. Okay. All right, I'm going to use moose for the tail. Now, the standard uh, pattern calls for grizzly and brown mixed. I like the looks of the moose better. It's stiffer. I think okay. it gives a different coloration to the fly. But anyway, I, I, like I said, I've had nothing but trouble with parachute atoms. I came back, I read how to finish, a different way of how to finish this fly so in a book. So how is this different? Then? Well, I'll, when I get to that point, I'll show mm -hmm. you, but it's, I, I read it in the book and I decided that that would never work. That was the dumbest thing I ever read. Uh, I kept coming back to it. Finally, it all fell together and I have been tying lots of small parachute atoms ever since then. All right, we'll go with this brown or so this. So uh, you're managing 18s now with this oh, batter. Or smaller. <laughs> or smaller. Or smaller, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I absolutely, it's just neat. Uh, when I get there, you will see exactly what I mean. I think you'll be able to do it. I think most anyone will be able to do it. It's just a matter of showing or watching what is done. Okay, now you're not using wax, you're just. I'm not using okay. wax. I don't like to use wax. Even on my wet flies, I don't. Now, I'm not sure that's enough dubbing, but we'll run forward and see. Now, I ran that moose all the way up to the base of that uh, wing post. And now, this is where if you were tying a standard parachute, You'd you stop would stop, right here. put the hackle on. Okay. I don't do that. Keep right on going. Go to the eye, come back, and now let your thread hang over the top. I took Maybe one wrap around, around the post. The post. Okay. All right. I will never, from this point on, go around the hook shank again. Everything will be finished around the wing post. Now I'm going to put my brown hackle in. So this is where it's different. You're tying that hackle directly to the post. Well, you always tie it to the post, but it's the way I'm going to finish it off when I'm completed okay. with it. Now there's the brown hackle. Here's the grizzly. Mm -hmm. And I am tying those stems up the post, which will give it a little bit more stiffness. Okay. And then I'm just going to make sure it's all bound in good. Now again, do not go around the hook shank. Now here I'm going to take a little bit of this rubber-based glue. You could use super glue if you wanted. Uh, anything to keep that hackle on because so many times tying, with, or tying parachutes, you catch a fish with it and the hackle wants to lift off over the top it, of the wing. It wing. always comes off the post This first. will keep yeah. that from doing that. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter which one you wrap. I'll take the brown one. Start at, the, start top at the top and come okay. down. Two, two and a half wraps. 
Now, again, do not go around the hook, just around the base of the post. A couple of wraps around, it does capture that hackle. Oh, that's, that's now, isn't that simple? Sure. Yeah. All right. So far, that's Grizzly, simple. same thing. Two, two and a half wraps. I'll start at the top, come down, again, just around the base. That's all. Around the post. Around the post. Okay. Get rid of that hackle. And now, how in the world do you finish the fly? Now, this is where you would grab everything, pull it out of the <laughs> way, finish it in yes. front. This time, I'll put my whip finish on it, and I'm going to go around the same place, the base of the post. I am not um. going around the hook shank, just the base. Come out of it, clip it off. Now, another nice thing about this, you don't have to use head cement. You've already cemented it inside to or, or post, to yeah. that post. Then just clip this post off to whatever length you want it to be. And there's a parachute atoms. Now, that wasn't all that hard. That That's a hard nice all. trick. All right, parachute atoms. We used Antron or poly yarn for the uh, wing. We used black moose for the tail, a gray synthetic dubbing, and the standard brown and grizzly hackle. So the difference from normal patterns then is you're finishing around the post instead, instead of the hook shank. right above the eye. And that way That's the, great. Look how the the, uh, the hackle all stays right there nice right. and even up on top. And you cannot tell where cannot that, tell where it has that been fly finished. was finished. And I thought to myself, well, it's not going to be durable. It just won't be durable. It is. I've caught a lot of fish with those flies finished that way, and it works very well. And you're well. able to tie this pattern in a much smaller hook? I've got them on 22s. 22s. The hardest part of tying a 22 is finding a hackle that small. But that's where it's fun. That's where it's fun. That's a great fly. But anyway, I'm anxious to go so where back. So where did you learn about this? I learned pattern? it out of a book. I learned it out of a book. I read about that post and I could not understand how it would work. But I'm anxious to go back to that little stream up in British Columbia. And, and now that I have some size 18 22s? Pair 22 <laughs> parachute atoms, I want to try that now. But that's a different version of the parachute. I really like the way it looks. I'm, I'm uh, going to have to practice. Yes. Well, basically that's what fly tying is, just a matter of practice. That's, that's all you do with it. Yeah. But it's that's fun. That's a great trick. It is, but it, it just makes such a neat looking fly as you rotate it around. And that's it. Parachute atoms. Now, don't you think you could tie one of those if you had to? Well, I'm getting closer. <laughs> I'm getting think. closer. And now I've been looking forward to this fly. I have not seen this fly before. Well, I mean, it's basically an elk hair caddis but it's tied with deer hair. I have never seen a fly tied like this with deer hair, and I'll sure you will explain why you use deer hair instead of elk. This is one of my favorite flies. Okay, Carolyn, what will we use? The materials we're gonna use, we're gonna tie it in a 14 dry hook. We've got a golden pheasant tippet, some yellow floss, uh, we've got some brown hackle, and we're gonna use deer hair instead of elk hair, and we're using ADOT black thread, okay? And this is one of my favorite flies. Um, I pretty much use that on all, all my fishing, all, all the rivers, all the creeks in this area. Um, this is a real high floater. Well, with the deer here, I'm sure it would. But yeah. why the golden pheasant? Uh, you know, I mean, I've never seen a, a, a caddis with a Hey, I, it's flashy. Oh, this is a flashy okay. little fly. I see. see? So this, this is, is a lot of color. <laughs> But you know, I, okay. I, I think with the deer hair, if you're looking for a fly to float higher, the deer hair may be the way to go. Yes, and not only that, we're using a lighter colored deer hair, so it's definitely oh, a high so floater, and you can yeah. see it very yeah. well. Okay, we're going to dress this hook out, and I added a little glue. I like to glue my thread down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Got a small clump of uh, golden pheasant mm -hmm. tippet, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to use, uh, I've got two strand, um, floss here. Now I tie this same fly in the yellow. I, I also use orange. Orange is a, a very good color and also gray. So I tie this fly in, in three different colors. Did you ever tie it in green? I have, uh, but I think um, gray is probably my most favorite. Really? Yeah, the gray one. 
Okay, so we're going to tie our floss on and we're going to tie in our hackle. Now I pull down the uh, barbs off, down off the stem and what I like to do is cut a little comb on each side of that stem. Where I strip mine all the way right. off, you cut, okay. Right, that way if, you know, the thread catches that, it doesn't pull out as easy. It will bind it better. Right, I can right. Sure. So I'm going to tie this in. We're going to get our floss untangled here first. Now see if that was a four strand floss, you'd yeah, be able to. Yeah, we'd have it all over. <laughs> we'd cut off and start over. Okay, we're going to tie our, our little hackle in here at the back. I'm going to bring this up two thirds way up. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to tie in our body. Now this is a real shiny material, so this gives this body the an floss, iridescent, yes, yeah. iridescent look to it. I'm going to tie this in. But yeah, the gray one is actually my favorite color. Have you ever tied this using yellow thread in place of the black? Uh, I have. Because so many times that floss will let the undercolor of thread, it will pick up that color? Uh, if, if you tie it a thin, I, I kind of build up the body oh, a bit. Oh, you do? So okay. I'm pretty okay. much wrapping that sucker over. So it's got a pretty good layer on it. Okay, we're going to cut off our... And then we're going to do our hackle. You want to do about, oh, three or four wraps with this. Not really bushy, just So it's almost to get the same as an elk hair caddis right now, exactly. except for the tail. Right. Hey, I like that tail. That's flashy. Okay. It's, it's stiff enough, too, that you get, you still get a well, good I was going to ask, will that give that some more floatability? I, I think it tail? does as well as the moose, I think. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to trim these off here at the top. That way our deer hair lays down a little better, mm -hmm. raise down a little flatter. Okay, we're going to cut off a pinch of deer hair, get rid of all the fluffy stuff here on it. When you're tying, do you find people ask you all the time, how big is a clump? Ah. <laughs> I guess after a while you feel what's yeah, the right you size. Have to do it more <laughs> yeah. feel because every piece of deer hair you have seems to be yeah. different. And it depends on the size of hook, of course, True. that you're using. Absolutely. Also. Okay, we're yes. going to tap this down. Okay. Which probably makes no difference to the fish, but. No, nope. we like to have them even. Okay, I like to have this about, you know, halfway between the end of my body and the edge of that golden pheasant tippet. So about half the length right, of the tail. Right, right. And we're going to tie this in. Okay. We're going to hold this real tight, pinch okay. that thread between my forefinger and my thumb. Going to pull it down snug. We're going to do it again three times. Pull that down nice so and snug, flare, but hang on to it. The flare doesn't seem to affect this fly Not as long then. as you keep it good and tight. We're going to do about six more wraps here. Make sure that's snug. Okay, so see flares up nice, but yes, okay. okay, now we're going to pull back all the little butts away from the eye, and we're going to finish this off in front. Get so you don't come back beyond the head again, behind right. the head. Right, right. Huh. We're going to finish it off right at the eye, and I do a finish with my hands, whip finish with my hands, okay. What, four or five wraps? Yeah, sometimes six. We got a couple of little stringers there. Yeah. Mm, broke my thread, but I think we're going to... I just manage. cut them. Oh, you did break the thread? Yeah, it broke Don't off we all. the hook. Don't we Okay, all. now we're going to pull all these little butt guys back up there. It looks like this is going to stay together anyway. We'll pull all these guys back forward, and then we're going to trim them off even. Trim the butts off. Right. Is that what you're mm -hmm. saying? Trim okay. the butts off. Catch all the little stragglers hanging out here. You know, that does make a colorful fly. Now, do you ever trim the bottom of that no, tackle? No, uh -uh. you, you want that, it kind of gives it a leggy effect there. So okay. we're going to add a little drop of cement on the underside here. And there you go, deer hair caddis. Great high floater. Now, where do you fish it? Do you fish the riffles? Do you fish the slicks? Do you fish how? This fly is such a high floater, boy, you could run it through your through your faster water and you'd still have a high floater and be able to see this. I love running a dropper fly behind this. A little yeah, I'll bet it nib. would, but you know, I think, I, okay, I'm anxious to try the fly. Okay. I, I think it will float higher. Yes, it will. With the deer hair than the elk. Very um, visible fly. Every elk hair caddis that I have has elk hair instead of deer. Yep. 
and they are low floaters. Yep. I mean, I mean, and it's not hard real to see high. them if the yeah, water's a little, a little bit, rough. Maybe, so could this, be. this one's a good uh, fast water fly. Well, tell us high. what you used again. Okay, we had a golden pheasant tippet for our tail. Mm -hmm. We used um, a floss yellow for the body material. Um, brown hackle palmered up across the body. And then uh, we finished off with deer hair instead of elk hair. Deer hair caddis. Well, I can see some real merit to that fly. I, I will tell Very you the Very flashy truth. little guy. Yes, it is. The fly we're gonna tie next is a Mother's Day caddis. Well, I think that's the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> this fly was given to me on the, on the Gallatin by one of the local guys over there, and he didn't tell me what the name of it was. And I have looked in book after book after book, and I finally found a pattern that looks very similar to this. And that's what it's and called. And that's what they call it. So that's what I've called it. All right, I'll use an dot black tying thread. I will use a size 14 dry fly hook. Now the fly can come with either a moose tail or no tail, doesn't seem to make any difference. Okay. A black uh, synthetic dubbing. And I have grouse feathers laid out here for the wing. You could also use a chucker feather if you wanted a slightly <coughs> lighter wing rather than the dark. And a black hackle. Now you can see the fly is going to be very dark. Um, the guy gave me this fly over there and uh, I set the hook on an awful lot of fish that weren't there. You know, they you rise close it, yeah. to where you think the fly is. It's very difficult to see, but I'll tell you what, I caught a lot of fish on this fly. I had a wonderful several days fishing the Gallatin over there. Now and what this, I'll do... What time of year was... This was, was mid to late August, Okay. and I know that this is not Mother's Day, and I know that there is a Mother's Day caddis that does hatch, uh, I'm sure that this is not the one, but uh, you had a good caddis hatch going. Had a good yeah. hatch of some kind going, and it really worked well. I will go ahead and put this on or tie this with the tail. Like I said, you can tie it with or without. Doesn't seem to make any difference. Again, about the length of the shank of the hook. That is a size 14. The barb has been pinched. Soft loop between my fingers. Pull it tight. I'll do that once more and then run up and make sure that I have all those butts bound down. Then back to the tie-in point right in front of the tail. Then I'll take this black dubbing, and this is a synthetic dubbing. I, again, I really like the way the synthetic floats. Uh, I think it floats much better than a lot of the natural water animals. But I really had several, oh, Unbelievable. One day I fished this fly in an absolute driving rainstorm and still caught several fish with it. I have no idea what they were taking I it for. I bet it was really hard to see then. It really was hard to see. Now is this yes. going to be a pretty heavy body or no, pretty sparse? No, fairly sparse. Okay. Now I'm going to come forward. And I guess what really struck me about this fly is the way the head was finished on it. I had not... Okay. Well, I've seen flies like this before, but, but not necessarily just exactly like it. Now here comes this, this grouse or chucker wing, and I, all I do is pull just a little bit of the uh, hackle off the stem, leaving that stem section, okay. and then tie it in over the top like a little tent. Shiny side up, right? Shiny side up. Okay. I'll take a couple of quick wraps, and then I'm going to pull that through the thread tie there to just to make a, a shorter wing. And what that does is you pull it through, it collapses that feather all together. Now I will clip the rest of that off, make sure it's all bound down nice. And then the black hackle, tie it in by the butt. And again, I don't strip mine, I mean, I don't clip mine like yeah, you do. You I just tie off. it in by the stem. and get a few good wraps of hackle. And I, when I tie mine, I put it with the shiny side forward. I know that's always a controversy among a lot of tires. Do I put it shiny side yeah. forward or dull side forward? Uh, you know, everybody's got their own idea of what works best for it. But so far, that really doesn't look like So would you take too much about two, three wraps? Oh, three or four probably okay. at the most, and then the part that I really liked about this when I first saw it, it's oh, got that same little second. black dubbed head, just yeah. exactly like the body was. 
and I, again, I, I wish I could tell you exactly what the name of the fly, and it may be nothing more than a local pattern these guys have come up with. But I had given him some flies, and I, I ran into him the next day, and he gave me this one. And I've really had some good days with it. I've had some good days uh, on some of our local streams around here with the fly, too. But that is that what... That is an interesting pattern. It really yeah. is. Uh, the next one I would tie, I would make that wing just a little bit longer. Although that's not bad. A higher. No, I'd just make it a little bit longer this way, not okay. necessarily high. It may set it up a little bit higher. But, uh, you know, these fish may take that as an ant pattern. That's what I was going to say. It looks more like an ant. Because it's got the two lumps. Yep. But, uh, like it, and I've caught brown trout in the Gallatin using that fly, totally dry, dressed, floating high, and taking browns with that. And usually browns don't come up and take the dry flies. But on this particular trip over there, they did. I'm anxious to go back and try it again. Uh, I, I, it seems like sometimes the fish get acclimated. They get used to right. seeing the same pattern over and over and over. And if you can get something different for them, it will make a difference to them most of the time. But that's what I call a Mother's Day mm -hmm. caddis. I'm going to put a little drop of head cement on it. And again, I'm not real sure that head cement is all that necessary for these flies. Uh, head cement started when we were using nylon thread, or silk thread, I mean, and uh, the regular head cement, I'm not sure that it's needed. But there's what I call a Mother's Day caddis. Has Boy, a, I would, if, if I was tying that without a tail, that would mm -hmm. be a great ant pattern. Yeah, it would, it really would. And maybe that's what it represents. I can't tell you that. That'd be a great I, ant I don't, pattern. But it's the gr dark grouse wing. And again, if you used a chucker wing, it would make it a little bit a little lighter, lighter yeah. so you can see it. But that's the way he gave it to me. It was with the grouse feather. And I've just kind of stuck with it that way. But there's a Mother's Day caddis. has a moose tail, moose body hair tail. It has a synthetic black dubbing, a grouse or chucker wing, black hackle, and a black dub head. Yeah, that's a great little fly. That might be a good second fly if you were running a uh, dropper fly. For a dropper? Yeah. It could well be. It uh, could well be. Running behind a caddis pattern. Well, Carolyn, that completes this series, this, this show for this series. We tied three flies, three different flies, right. how to tie a parachute atoms, which was a little bit different way to finish the fly. Mm, a nice. It is. Nice it makes it nice. Pattern, yeah. Then we tied a uh, deer hair caddis, which I had never seen, and especially with the golden pheasant tippet yep, tail. One of my favorite flies. Dresses it up. And then we finished off with my version of a Mother's Day caddis, not knowing exactly what, what the fly is, was given to me on the river bank. And it's a good fly. It works very well in almost every area I have used it. And you said you would also like to try it. Oh, that I'd like to use it as an ant pattern. That's a that's well, a great little fly. I'll sell you the pattern. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just we take that, that tail off and you got a great ant pattern. Yeah, it <laughs> would. Really would. Well, that concludes another show. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for stopping by. Leroy and Carolyn have produced a 60-minute video demonstrating how to tie 10 of their favorite flies. Available on DVD number 28 for $18.95 plus shipping and handling. Programs from this series are also available on DVD. Each disc contains two programs and costs $18.95 plus shipping and handling. Please indicate disc number 21 for this episode. You can get the complete series of 13 programs for $89.95. Credit cards are accepted. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website, kwsu.org.
For more information about this program, please visit our website, kwsu.org.